But I think one of the important things to keep in mind, especially for runners or sprinters, is that the hamstring muscles are really, really, really important. And that's probably why a lot of sprinters out there, they, if not taken care of, are so susceptible to hamstring injuries. Now, let's actually briefly break down on what the exact construction of not even just the hamstrings, but the legs are in particular. But if we look at the hamstrings, the three primary muscles, I think are the semi-membranosus, semi-tendinosus, and let me turn down some music a little bit, semi-membranosus, semi-tendinosus, and then your bicep femoris. As for the origin insertion, it's not utterly important, but we do want to kind of consider where they start and end. Just based on where the locations are, at the back of the legs, just working an accessory uh, with the glutes. So they're responsible for this um, reverse hinging movement, actually standing up, so at the bottom of a squat, coming to full extension. Um, but in addition to that, they also provide for some knee flexion. Meaning that the muscles on the opposite side, uh, the remaining muscles that aren't involved in hip extension, so excluding the sartorius and rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedialis would be responsible for knee uh, extension. So again, keying in specifically on the hamstring muscles, again, they're very susceptible to injury, and if we don't take care of them as such, you're probably gonna hurt it a lot. This is something that a lot of sprinters always have issues with, and I feel like before and after workouts, uh, sprint workouts in particular and weight training workouts, I always want to condition the hamstring muscles specifically and the glutes. I mean, they do work hand in hand in addition to the calves and the Achilles, but this is one of the exercises that I do with the kettlebell to help for some additional activation. I have this 45 here that I use for a little bit extra weight. And again, you don't need an excess amount of weight, but you need enough weight to make sure that you're getting the job done. So with this, it's not necessarily conventional kettlebell swing. I would add a little bit of an extra hinge. Now, a conventional kettlebell swing, again, just from a sagittal view here, would be for me to let this weight swing down and drive the hips up. Again, really squeezing the glutes at the top. I don't need to swing the kettlebell very high. I just need to get some good hip extension at the top. Now, the limitations as to how much glute and hamstring activation I can get by doing this regular kettlebell swing, which is why I'll add a little bit of an extra hinge and putting the weight out in front of me as I get into this lowered position. So it's not the conventional kettlebell swing. I swing up, back down, out in front, then bring it back in here. You can liken it to the activation or the feeling of doing pulse squats. That's probably the best comparison that I can make. But generally, it's about getting down low, using the weight, don't muscle the weight up, but you wanna get that extra hinge. Sometimes you may not necessarily feel it in the hamstring quite a bit, which is actually why you probably wanna do a bunch of other exercises to help activate them a little bit more to prime your muscles for that particular activity to make sure that they're fully ready and prepared. Otherwise, try to slow down the movement, and especially in that backswing component, make sure you feel that stretch.